Good day, everybody. I'm Anton Bogdanich from the University of Western Sydney. Last time I raised an issue with the future of video games, and today's video will provide some insight on what I meant on that. So I'm a researcher, and I spend most of my time sitting at my desk, pressing some keyboard buttons. I used to play some basketball in the university league, but now I don't play all that often. When I do play, I can tell that I still remember the moves. I can still remember the proper moves, proper tactics, but what I lose very quickly is uh, the shooting ability. Right? It requires quite some practice and quickly deteriorates. So I wish I just could stand up from my desk every couple of hours and just practice my shooting for 15 minutes. But I can't do it in my office because it's rather small. And playing with a ball inside is not, not a very good idea. One thing I learned from being a child, when we had a case that only one person in our school had the actual physical ball, and when it was in team, what we had to do is we had to play with an imaginary ball. And it's, it's all good and fun for a while to, to, you know, to shoot imaginary ball and dribble with it. But another thing I learned from being a kid is that it's not all that fun for a very long while. And another problem is it doesn't really improve your shooting ability at all. So you can practice some shooting, but it doesn't help you to get the ball inside. So here at UWS we have developed a technology that makes imaginary basketball nearly as fun as playing with a physical ball. So as you can see, I can be dribbling the ball properly without really holding any control devices in a similar way as if I'm playing the actual basketball game. I can make shots. And the nice part about it that the shooting skills I learned here can be directly exercised in the physical world, right? So they don't get lost. Unlike any other computer games where you just play with your keyboard, here you play in exactly similar way as if you would be playing in, the, in an actual game in the physical world. Now let me tell you how this technology works. I'm wearing a full body motion capture suit, have sensors all over the body, and it can precisely register a slightest movement of every part of my body. So you can see it here, tiny little moves in my, in my hand. You can see them quite clearly, right? And everything, every part of my body is directly visible what kind of movements I do. So our technology can read this data off my body, all the physics there, and broadcast it to all the surrounding objects. Right? And I want to highlight that we can read proper actual physics of the human body, meaning we can read all the velocities, positions, accelerations, directions of every sensor we have here. And then having this data, we can program the ball to detach from my hand when I'm shooting it, like that, right? And we can also detect the velocity, the leaving velocity from my hand with which the ball has to be detached and which direction it must fly. And then provided that we have a proper mapping between the physics system of the virtual world and the physics of the real world, if I shoot here, the shot that results scoring here in the virtual world would essentially result scoring in the real world, right? Because at the same physics, the same kind of moment I would be exercising. 
Now another thing that is that is cool about the system is something that I always wanted when I was practicing basketball as a kid is to see myself playing. And that's exactly the possibility I have here. Right? So that, that's proper me with proper movement, properly playing basketball, and I can quickly learn from that. I, I and got all excited with all this basketball and playing it and nearly forgot about the actual technology I'm presenting here. The 3D engine I'm using for, for filming it is the virtual world of Second Life. And not only Second Life gives us the actual 3D engine, but it's, it's a fully fledged virtual world with extensive support for collaboration in multi-user facilities. This means that I can pretty much interact with anyone without really doing anything about it, or it's just by definition other people can come and join me. So, for example, if my former playmates from back at the uni could have the same suit I'm currently wearing, we could be meeting with them in this virtual world right now. And I'm here in Australia, they would be somewhere in Europe, and we could just meet and play proper basketball. Or I could invite my coach that trained me before, and even though he's in Europe as well, we could just meet here together. I could show him a shot like that that doesn't go in, and he would be able to, to help me with some advice, right, just by observing it in the virtual world. And that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed it, and see you next time.